Here is a plot of EZ at the observation point that I obtained when there's no body included in the model. This first peak corresponds to the initial wave propagating down to the snow. The second peak is the small about 12% reflection from the snow as we predicted earlier. And this third peak here is the approximately 35% reflection from the ground. So here is snow surface and the ground surface reflections. Now in this plot and in the video that we can see while the simulation is running is that there's no evidence of any retro reflections occurring anymore at the location of the source, which is what we want. Also the time delay of these pulses should match the propagation distances uh, the time that it takes for the pulse to propagate through the air and the snow regions. One thing you may notice is that the amplitude of the electric field, EZ, is a little bit different now after we switched from a hard source to a soft source. Before with a hard source, the electric fields only had values between minus 1 and 1, the same amplitudes as the source waveform. But now for the soft source, we are multiplying the source waveform by dt over epsilon naught, and we're subtracting it from the regular update of our electric field. So we would expect to have different amplitudes for the electric fields in the grid now, in addition to the source no longer retro-reflecting the waves. Remember how we decided we didn't need a PML on the right side of the model, as long as the round-trip propagation distance is about 8 skin depths? And also, as long as we didn't care about modeling all those extra cells compared to a much thinner 10-cell PML. Here's a plot of EZ only in the ground region of the model. So here on the right is I equal I max. And on the left side of this plot, this corresponds to the ground surface. In this plot, we can see an exponential decay of the fields into the ground with some reflections occurring at I equal I max, but the decay is strong enough that the part of the wave reflecting back from the right edge of the grid is so small, it's too small for us to care about by the time it reaches back to the snow region again. Next time we will try running the code again while including the body, and we'll compare those results with the results we obtained today that do not include the human body. The next lecture will be shorter as we write up, wrap up this design challenge in order to give you some extra time to finish and submit your one-dimensional Maxwell's equations code and results.